I guess, if I may, I'd like to, uh, I represent the task force of the chair, and I guess I just got a couple of questions, but I guess other than comments, as far as if we're in the question and action phase of the meeting. And, and first of all, you know, we really appreciate, you know, you taking the time and, and, and honoring us to allow us to come and, and uh, gain this information and, and have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue face-to-face. We really appreciate that. And I think I speak for the 12 county members of the North South Florida and Southern Bureau Basin. Um, and, and we really appreciate that. I know y'all have spent millions of dollars and everything that you're doing. I've very been pretty impressed with some of the things I've seen tonight on what you're doing to really that. And I'm, I'm glad to know, and as we all know from our research and the information we've gained, that the, the most the most impact you're having is major rain events because of the stormwater infiltration into your system. And I really appreciate you know, seeing some of the things you're, you're doing to, to, uh, to remedy that. Um, I guess it kind of it, it drives home with us and our region downstream whenever we, we hear these events and, and the half a million people that live in the North Central Florida area and the 12 counties that we, we all represent. Um, and, and this is a major concern to all of our constituents as well as us. And it definitely has a direct correlation to impact on our health, environment, and so forth. And uh, with that being said, one of the main things that we're asking, and we asked, I know we and myself, and, and Scott, and Brian met with, with the mayor and, and Mark, was uh, immediate notification. And I think we walked away from that meeting with, well, we'll notify, you know, Brian. But I guess just listening to some of the questions and answers that I've just heard, I think that's where part of the gap is. I think we're not getting the immediate notification that our constituents deserve and need for their safety and, and health. And I think that's something that as a, as a group of, of concern, folks on both sides of the county line or the state line that we need to work for. Tonight. If you have an event, we need to know about it. And in the past, it's been four days since we heard about it. You know, and by then, you know, and then whenever these events have happened in the past, and the department helped us get out there and start testing, the human E. coli or bacteria levels are out of the so you think, so your folks have tested the E. coli to make sure you? Yes, yes, yes. We've got, you know, from Department of Health, Foreign Department of Health, they have data going back to 2008. Yeah. Whenever these first started. And every event, the human E. coli, or how you want to say it, despite 10, 20, 30 times higher than what the normal allowable amount is. Yeah, and that's some data. That, but that, see, that's some data that I wish you guys would share with us. Because we, this is the first time I heard it. And, and they say they can follow us down the river. You know, I, I think the one was even higher than that. The yeah. first service in the unit, the way they check for it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I, I think the disconnect that we're having, either we're, we're having locally, mm -hmm. even to our state, DEP, is communication when it comes to immediate notification. So if our department help, we have to put these warning signs out for our, for our public. Don't be in the river, you know, for these things. And I would definitely, I mean, I think if y'all agree as a task force that one of our major questions or concerns is that immediate notification. We need to let our people know, we need to let the public know that there is an event, that there is a spill, right. and if it's 72 hours later, Director, then my folks in Madison County is already in. Yeah. I'd like to say, Rick, since you and I, Brian, reached our agreement, uh, we notified the first that we came to the city of Brian. You got notification before our public came about us to be honest. And we got immediate notification. I don't think it's incumbent upon our coordinator yeah, 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 who's been working on our state. But who is that person? I'll, I'll yeah. ask for after our conversation. Right. Give me that person, I will make that phone call. That's, that's all and, and I understand what you said, it kind of shocked me a while ago whenever this was still in our state, one point was notified, I don't know what happened from that. I don't know, <laughs> we, 
the hour to go off the mail an hour as far as being notified so they can get the notification of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, right now I was calling uh, uh, Mr. Davis at first for the big rain event in December, and then we switched to Mr. Coffin. We haven't had a rain, we haven't had a, a release. We haven't had that. a major rain. But I do agree with you. I would prefer it to be something like this. And I'll like, share this because. You know, I don't know when I'm calling you immediately or emailing you immediately. I don't know all that information you're asking me because they're out of the <coughs> they don't know how many gallons yet. But I do want to make that call to you or whoever it's going to be, Scott or whoever it's going to be, that we've had to deal with. I may not can answer all your questions, but I absolutely like I've told you in the past. I have no problem with that. The is really right. right. I'm going to put it from relevant right then is the fact that it's occurred. That's right. And that's, and that's exactly what I've done since we made the agreement. So, but I'm happy and I want to continue to do that because I think you're right. We need that communication. We need to bridge that gap somewhere. And I think there is a gap there. Like we need to find that word for that. And yeah, you know, you know, we said when, you know, we, we would love to have one person to contact. And because uh, I don't know I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't immediately. And like during that rain event, Daryl, Email, email me, call me. You're the first person that I email. Mr. Barber, is yes, it possible since you're saying email, and to me that is the most efficient way to get the word out? There are 12 counties represented. Is it possible to just have the county coordinator, county manager for each county listed on? on the email and as soon as you know that there has been a spill just get it out to let our county coordinator know and then he can pass the word on down to right. us. I, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Right. Right and now, and it can be line. set up as you know instead of you having to go in and look and type in 12 different ones well, every time. So. Just I have, have it ready and I, yeah, our county coordinator is here tonight and he would be the one sure. who would take care of our county and that way Madison wouldn't have to be looking after us. Sure. Just, but like I said, just know at that point, I may not know everything you may want, right. but I want you to know. But at least we know there's something to be watching That's for. That's right. And, and I will get back to you when I get that information. But that first one to our period, as Gerald said, I've got, to, you know, I've got to get the information toward the EPD within 24 hours. So is that what the, is that the, what the consent order calls for? No, I think that's the state order. That's the state order. That's the state order at 24 hours. And we're usually... As a matter of fact, when Darrell and I were at Atlanta being with EPD Monday, you know, they told us when they looked through our reporting, we were really pretty much much under that 24-hour reporting period of getting information to them. Okay. I, I guess the trigger, the, the, the trigger in Georgia, is that, a, is that on Georgia's EDP? Or is it a, to notify the state of Florida? I don't know. I, I don't know that relationship between Georgia and Florida. Do you know, does, is it a common upon G, G, I'm telling you that, Georgia's running over EPD. EPD to notify Florida DP of a spill? Not that I'm aware of. No, no. We, we normally would like for the state warning point to be notified. And a lot of times we are notified by the city of Valdosta directly through Scott Fowler uh, when the spill has occurred. But I agree with you, we need to come up with a, a mechanism put in place where all of us are on the same page, getting the same information, and uh, be able to take it. <coughs> I mean, social media knows there's a spill before we do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, I mean, that's not true. I'm not agree with that. I can promise you that. So, I mean, that's a, that's a problem, you know. So, and I don't, like I said, I can't speak to the relationship between Georgia EPD and Florida. Right. Well, there's not one. Well, <coughs> well, we like to work together, and, and we have talked with them in the past, but right now we're, it's still a work in progress that we're trying to get notification in place when not just Valdosta, but any of the southernmost uh, counties in Georgia be able to notify our department when there is a spill. So. But in the meantime, uh, Barbara, we'll, we'll compile a list and we'll compile a new list within the next few days or a few weeks. So at our next uh, task force meeting, we'll have that list. Just give me the names and 